Hey guys, I'm Jeff Feinberg back with you for oddschecker.com slash US and we are here breaking down the Houston Open, the viv Vivint Houston Open, which I don't know if I did that company justice, but I went as far as to look it up and see that it is a home security company, whatever, uh, formerly the Shell Houston Open for many, many years. Last year, I believe it was just the Houston Open with some Houston Astros ties. Uh, we can get into that maybe more uh, in a moment. Not that anyone cares. Uh, like, sub, comment. I'll be, again, I'll be here again tomorrow giving you some props. Uh, NFL content later in the week. And oh, baby, it's a master season. And I got a couple Easter egg specials uh, for you with the guys uh, here at Odds Checker. So sub. Sub, like, comment, tell me who you think is going to win the Houston Open this week. Last week, full disclosure, probably one of my worst weeks of the year. Um, there's a reason I think I tried to keep the units lower than normal. Didn't really have a feel, um, and got blown out of that one pretty quick. I didn't sleep well as Doc Redman played well those first few rounds, and you guys don't want to know how close I was to betting Peter Malnati last week either. So his presence annoyed me. But in the end, it doesn't matter. We certainly weren't going to bet Brian Gay. So we move on. Um, what an amazing – Brian Gay's a legend. You listen to my podcast regularly with the PME and golf season. I always use Gay as a reference point, like how all these guys are amazing and so cool. Even a guy like Brian Gay who you probably couldn't remember the last time he won. He's had his PGA Tour card for 20-plus years. Makes you a legend in my book. Great to see. Uh, I don't know. Guy slays. Rocks those G4s, Diamond Resorts. Now he's got some exemptions. What a legend. What a legend. Uh, I mean that. I mean that. And swing season's been wild. I mean, Gay hit at 200. Marty Layer big hit. Stewie Sink, big hit. Sergio mid-range. Coke rack in the 90s where he outdid Xander fantastic, Swaff Daddy. So uh, we've, had, we've had some nice little big tickets here. I wasn't a part of any of them. But we get ours. Don't worry. We eat ours. Uh, Houston, field much stronger than I had originally anticipated. Um, there are a lot of factors in play with that, obviously. Um, people wanted to ramp up before the Masters, the schedule change. Um, Yada, yada, yada. Memorial Park Golf Course, I believe this is the first time we are here for the Houston Open. Par 72, uh, 7,400 yards. Brooks Kepka heavily involved in the renovation, uh, paid for by Houston Astros owner Jim Crane. I remember last year loving the trophy, loving the tee boxes, uh, that whole Houston Astros vibe that this tournament had. Uh, with the stank on the Astros, now I don't really care for it. That's just, I don't know how it is. Um... Brooks, he encouraged a scorable golf course, did not want, um, I believe the exact quote was, did not want to see guys fighting for par. Exciting, dramatic lead changes was his um, suggestion with the renovations as he was heavily involved. As I mentioned, um, feels like a bomber's course, five par fives, drivable par fours, certainly should set up well for a player like Brooks Kepka. Um, I, you know, Dustin Johnson at the top, Her Terrell Hatton, uh, Brooks Kepka, all there, not betting any of them. Those are the guys that are under 20 to one, I believe. I'll say this about Brooks. I'm not betting him to win the Masters. I don't really care what happens this week. I'm pretty secure in my Masters positions. Um, but if you like Brooks, if you're leaning on Brooks, if you see any life this week, I think you got to bet that because the number will drop. The number will drop just based on Bruce Kepa showing life. If he shows life, shows health, shows that he's healthy, um, his number will drop for next week because he's Brooks Kepka. And major championship golf is so easy for him, apparently. That being said, this is a tournament next week where I feel like his whole shtick about like only 20, 30 guys can actually win these things, it's probably pretty true. It's not going to give him a hard time about that. Uh, let's get into it. Wow, didn't really need to ramp it up that bad, but I didn't think I'd have much to say, and I got a ton to say. Uh, so we'll see where we get it. I already told you, Memorial Golf Course, uh, Brooks Kepka, 
Blah, blah, blah. Ah, week before major. I play armchair psychologist a lot every week. I feel the weeks before majors, I do it more. I do it more. I feel like there's certain motivations at play, and I'm trying to guess them. But I believe this card is very um, guys that, well, inexperienced, don't win much. Young players, young players. Okay, let's start it off. Um, wow, this is where we're going to start, but I got to do it. Tony Finau, 22 to 1, guys, 22 to 1. Catch that over at FanDuel. There are 16 to 1s out there. I believe 22 to 1 on Tony Finau is an incredibly fair number in this field. Um, I thought about bidding Scotty Scheffler long and hard. I did. But at the same price, I wasn't betting him over Finau. I get all the reasons why people like Scheffler this week for the win, the Texas Longhorn. Um, a lot of it makes sense. I believe it makes just as much sense for Tony Finau. In his first start with Finau uh, off COVID, he had a Saturday lead at the Sherwood. He made a Saturday triple, which kind of catapulted him out of there. You could say peak Finau. But by every metric, this place sets up for Finau, guys. Um, Strokes gain total, third. Strokes gain approach, third. Strokes gain around the green, fourth. Strokes gain tee to green, fourth. All recent form ranks of the last eight events. So Tony plays. I mean, we get the median putter. We're going to be just fine. We avoid the catastrophic mistake. We're going to be just fine. We avoid the peak Fino moment. We're going to be just fine. I honestly didn't come into the week... I knew Tony would play well. I wasn't really planning on betting him, and I'll get into sort of why I'm betting him. It was my research on another player that led me to seeing how amazing Tony truly is playing and how much the course sets up for him. And he's uh, lost in a playoff on this Bermuda grass in Phoenix to Webb. He finished – he went. He was the Sunday favorite in the uh, Detroit before a major this year. Uh, the week before, I don't know, this guy's just got to win. I'm going with Tony Finau this week. I believe the number of 22 to 1 is actually incredibly um, fair for him versus this field, um, despite the win equity. I'll go as far to say what win equity, and since you've, since you have, Tony Finau's been on your radar as a guy that might win golf tournaments, how should his win equity be any different than Hideki Matsuyama? I'm not saying you're looking to bet Matsuyama, but I'm just saying in this window, there's a lot of guys that just haven't won that you think should have. He's one of them. I think he can win this week. You know, I'm a Fino guy. You take that for what it's worth. You want to fade me? Play Scheffler. I'm taking Fino. Um, it is, though, Victor Hovland at 30 to 1 over on FanDuel. I'm seeing 20s out there, guys. I'm seeing 20s. We're playing that Victor at 30 uh, on FanDuel. Best odds available using that odds checker grid. I'll be perfectly honest as I flip the page on my notes. Oh, okay. Top line there. Puerto Rico Open Special. I don't see a correlation, but anytime I got Victor and T Finau on the same card, we got a bank on that Puerto Rico Open curse ending. Please. Um, Hovland, 30 to 1. Best number. We'll avoid those 20s. Call me a cocky SOB, guys. But the second he tweet, he doesn't tweet. He doesn't have a Twitter. The second the Houston Open's official account tweeted that BDV was showing up in Houston this week, call me a cocky SOB, but I knew I was going to bet him because I think he's going to win. And a lot of the numbers support it. Um, and truth be told, while searching Victor's numbers just to make myself feel right, my cocky thought was uh, what popped for Fino. Everywhere I saw Victor's stats popping, in, in recent four metrics, Fina was coming in just ahead, just ahead. So um, that's what's sort of like, whoa, I got I to gotta circle back to Tony and relook at that. And the stats actually do match up with my perception. Victor, um, yeah, we said it. You call me cocky. Uh, since, since he tweeted his commitment, I committed to betting him in this event. I'm happy to score the 30 to 1. Um, recent form versus the field is comparable to how great a lot of those stats were that I mentioned um, versus Finau uh, previously. Again, I believe Vic is prime for this setup this week. Like Tony, we're going to need the putter. But keys for Tony and Victor are how well they're playing around the greens. Around the greens, they're playing well. 
Um, so I like that. I like Vic a lot this week. A lot. Leave it at that. 30 to 1. I'm in. Uh, keep moving along. 30 to 1. Another player I debated against, Scotty Scheffler. But I decided I'm going to bet Sung JM because I believe their ability to win this tournament is essentially equal. And I'm going to take the extra points on, on Sung JM. 30 to 1 available. I'm seeing it um, as low as some 24. So let's catch the 30s. I think the setup and the conditions work absolutely perfectly for, um, are, are incredibly attractive for Sung JM. Uh, his ball striking remains elite. The putter has abandoned him. Uh, there was an event recently we bet him. It was insane. Like he was like third in the field in ball striking uh, strokes gained tee to green, but his putting was around that 156 mark. His putter goes hot and cold. It really does. Uh, that's the reality of him. That's the reality of a lot of tour players. But the Bermuda grass greens are his sweet spot. This is where I believe we can match the ball striking with the putting. I think the price is fair for this field, for this event. Um, Windy Houston with Bermuda greens, I believe, sets up very well uh, for Sung JM. I was there in person at the Honda where he conquered Windy Bermuda greens um, at the Honda Classic this year in Palm Beach PGA National while this course will be exponentially easier, exponentially lower scores, uh, I believe it is a sweet spot uh, situation for Sung J M. Moving along, South Korea. Last week I was Team Sweden. Worked out horribly. Epic miscalculation, Team Sweden. Henrik withdrew. Henrik withdrew. Hoffman and Varner might have been close to DFL. Woo! I don't mind. Get, get, blow, blow me out. Blow me out on a Thursday or Friday. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. If I bet Doc Redman, it would have won just as much money and been a lot more painful, I think. That's just the reality of it, guys. I bet outrights. Very, I very off seldomly play in each way. I am go big. I go home. Uh, water finds its level for every outright I miss. I get full payouts on my each ways. Uh, but you got to realize third place pays as much as miscut, pays as much as DFL when you do what we do, what I do. And we were pretty good at it. Siwoo Kim, um, got to pat myself on the back here. Caught an early line at a 66. The 50s that are available, I still back. There are 50s available, a consortium of them. Beware using that odds checker grid. A lot of places pumping 40s out now for Siwoo. Went to bed on Monday night, woke up Tuesday morning. Two guys' odds dropped pretty substantially overnight. One was Donald Trump. The other was Siwoo Kim. I got no opinion on the first thing. That's not my bag. I love everybody. As for the second, I believe in the Siwoo Kim odds drop, and I would still play it at the 50 if I hadn't already been in at the 66. And I'll even play a little at the 50 just so me and you are on the exact same number. That's how I feel. That's how I roll. Uh... Bermuda, I mean, anytime we're on Bermuda grass, I deep dive Siwoo Kim. Bent grass, Bermuda greens, uh, you deep dive Siwoo Kim. I understand why he's popular. It makes perfect sense. He's playing well. He's striking the ball well. And now we're going to a shorter, uh, scorable opportunity, Bermuda green golf course. That is Siwoo Kim's jam. That is what he does best. So um, it makes perfect sense that people like Siwoo Kim this week. How can you not? And as we just mentioned, missed cuts are the same as second, third place. Although at the 50s is where I might start to consider each ways, but I'm not in this situation. Uh, there are very few players in the world who are better Bermuda results than Siwoo Kim. There's probably not four players in the world who have better Bermuda results uh, in the last five years than Siwoo Kim, especially in this field. In this field, it's probably lower. Um, so I really do like Siwoo Kim this week. If I can uh, join me for the prop show, if I can find some attractive head-to-head -head options, he's a guy I'll be looking um, to team up with or to, to take on some guys. Hopefully there's guys that I don't really approve of. That's me. Those are the four picks. We're headed into Masters Week soon. I'll be back with Houston Props. Masters Easter Egg is going to be coming from me on Odds Checker, maybe even a, lo a little longer form, something, something get you excited. So sub!
sub. So that'll drop right away for you when that does uh, come through the pipeline and comment. Tell me who you think is going to win in Houston this week. I am Jeff Feinberg. Thank you for watching. Uh, always appreciate your guys' support. Excited. It's Masters. You feel it in the air. Uh, but we got a banger this week in Houston with this field. So let's have some fun. As my man Marenzi says, may the winners be yours. As my man Tim Anderson says, end meeting. Later, friends.